If we take uh, a page from conventional 3D printing of plastics, it's easy to, the first thing to understand is that conventional manufacturing isn't going to go away. Uh, and, uh, but what is happening is that new opportunities for making optimized and customized parts uh, and therefore optimized and customized foods uh, will become available. I don't think it's going to affect uh, global food production in, in a big way, but it's going to create new, new opportunities to make uh, customized foods, to make things on demand, to increase the variety uh, of food, to combine food production and software uh, in new ways that weren't possible before. There's a, a lot of a sort of new frontiers that, to explore. When we started working with uh, food printing, it was sort of more of a frivolous novelty thing. Okay, let's print text inside a cookie, let's print a you know, cheese shaped like a shuttle. But uh, very quickly, we began to see that there are these opportunities to control the ingredients uh, in a very precise way, to make uh, you know, different cookies, for example, that each of them has different sugar content or, different, or avoid certain materials or even has embedded medication or uh, is adjusted based on biometrics, all these different things that are impossible if you think about food production in a mass production uh, uh, frame of mind. One thing we've discovered very quickly is that uh, food printing is much more difficult uh, and complex than printing with engineering materials. Plastics and metals have been tailored uh, over millennia to have very precise, well-known properties, very repeatable, very reliable, because they're used in so many things. When it comes to, uh, to, to food, uh, the behavior is much more complex. There's a lot more uh, things that can happen, uh, there are a lot more nonlinear things happening when you combine uh, ingredients, and all of that needs to be sort of, if you want computers to handle it, they need to be able to understand and predict. Food printing basically works uh, by combining materials that arrive in as either a gel, a paste, a liquid, or a powder. So it's all about uh, processing uh, materials. And so you're not going to print, uh, you know, if you're going to print a, a hamburger, you can print the bun and the burger, but you can't print the tomato and the lettuce. So, so it has, it's very difficult to, to work with sort of ingredients that are natural. But uh, uh, on the other hand, if you think about uh, you know, most of the food that we buy in the supermarket, at least half of it is made out of these ingredients, powders and, and paste and, and gels. And so I think uh, uh, it's not a stretch of the imagination to see how that range of, of, of foods that we buy in the supermarket can be greatly expanded using only the basic powders and gels and paste that we already use to make uh, the things that we, we buy. As a mechanical engineer, it's difficult <laughs> for me to, to, uh, to talk about the future of food. We sort of stumbled on this food printing uh, sort of by accident, uh, by using food materials for engineering purposes and then sort of sticking with it. Uh, but I do see very strong parallels with other industries. Again, the ability, the, the need to customize things, the need to have control, even the ability to connect cooking with information technology and software, uh, connecting cooking with... Um, social networking, the idea that uh, people can design a pastry and post it online and somebody can print it on the other side of the world. People can share slices of a cake uh, even though they're physically apart. All these things that bring together software and cooking in a ways that weren't possible before uh, make me uh, believe that uh, the same thing with cooking and, and food printing will happen that, that happened to anything else that software has touched.